the Helen Sussman Foundation has cautioned the president against the appointment of what it says are state capture beneficiaries in the cabinet. For more on the planned reshuffle, we're joined by Ezekiel Kekana, a researcher at the foundation. Very good afternoon to you. Thank you for your time. Welcome to Newsroom Africa. Good afternoon, Paul, and good afternoon to the viewers. The cabinet reshuffle, we've uh, now since heard that uh, come 7 o'clock tomorrow evening, those changes will be unveiled and announced. You say that uh, before those names are released, you're warning of, of some of the dangers that come with some candidates. Yeah, well, the, the state capture report is quite clear about uh, ministers and deputy ministers who were involved in the state capture uh, project. So we as a foundation were saying that the president has an opportunity to ensure that he does not appoint ministers and deputy ministers that were, were fingered in the state capture report. And we make mention of Minister, Ma, Ma, Minister Mantashi and also Deputy Minister Makweta and Koto because they have been fingered as having been beneficiaries of state capture the process. Um, let's talk about um, Gwede Mantashe. I mean, he is uh, the most senior cabinet member mentioned in the state capture report, occupying a very crucial uh, position uh, as minister, as you and I speak. W what do you think should happen around that space? I mean, as you make this, this warning and um, hope that uh, there are some changes, in fact, uh, just speaking to another political analyst, he was saying that we shouldn't expect much of the, the reconfiguration because what the president will merely do is just uh, recycle. It will always be familiar faces. Well, the president has an opportunity to ensure that he implement the recommendations of the Zondo report. And if he has to do that, then he has to get rid of Minister Mantash because he has been fingered in the, in the report as having been a beneficiary of Busasa proceeds. So the, the president, if he's a man of his, his weight, because he did mention in his uh, report to the recommendation that he is forced to implement the recommendation. And if he is a man of his weight, he will ensure that he implement those recommendations and by, by firing Minister Mantash. Mandashe has filed court papers at the Johannesburg High Court to challenge the recommendations, but we know that in terms of process, that matter ha has not been finalized and determined. Well, uh, the mere fact that he, he decided to challenge the recommendation, he speaks about how maybe he sees himself in the report. And the mere fact that there's an investigation that uh, the commission has made that he needs to be investigated. That means he, he, he ought to vacate the position and go out and clear his name before he can occupy that position of being a minister. He cannot, uh, as a minister, still have issues that he, he still needs to deal with. Uh, another another name here, Zizi Kodwa, who is currently Deputy Minister of State Security, he is also looking to go through the same process uh, as Mandashe, saying that uh, he is going to uh, challenge the state capture, record, uh, uh, state capture recommendations relating to him, but uh, he has never denied receiving a so-called loan. Does that make him any better, or are you still adamant that uh, such candidates should not be put in the new cabinet? Well, well, the report says that uh, Minister, uh, Deputy Minister um, uh, Porto can, 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 can cannot still be uh, in his position because it seems like he's beholden to uh, uh, one Jehan McKay who has given him loan. A loan that uh, Mr. Porto has not denied that he had received and a loan that we don't know what was the reason why he got it. So this, the, the commission was quite clear when it comes to Mr. Porto that uh, the president needs to look at his position because he cannot still be safe as as, as, as Deputy Minister. What about Tabang Magwetla? He is now the Deputy Minister of Defence and Military um, Veterans. He has also been linked, of course, linked around Busasa handouts. What are your thoughts around him? Well, it's not actually my thoughts. It's what the, the, the Commission is the, has said about, about uh, the conduct of Mr. Magwetla. He, like Mr. Mr. Mantashi, received uh, security upgrades from Busasa. And the, the Commission found very scary that he could not see a conflict of interest because when he received those security updates, he was the deputy minister of professional services where Busasa was doing business uh, with the department. So the, the conflict of interest kind of like comes out there to say he could not uh, 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 he could not have seen himself being involved in, in that conduct because 
Uh, the constitution is clear when it comes to the conduct of deputy ministers and, and, and ministers that they cannot involve themselves in a situation whereby conflict of interest will arise. If you had to perhaps, uh, you know, speak to the president, let's say he's watching and listening to our conversation, what uh, advice would you give him ahead of the reconfiguration? I will say to the president, the president, you have an opportunity to implement the recommendation of the state capture report. You told us that you are forced to implement them. Now this, this cabinet reshuffle gives you enough opportunity to implement those recommendations. And if you are, you are a man of your weight, you will ensure that Minister Mantashi, Deputy Minister Kortua and Deputy Minister Makweta do not get to serve the people of South Africa as ministers and deputy ministers. South Africans have been waiting for a long time trying to get a sense of when this reshuffle will happen. We've finally learned that it will happen tomorrow evening. And, uh, of course, uh, the importance of, of the cabinet reshuffle and the significance looking at the current socio-economic uh, factors that South Africa is facing, the issue of load shedding and also looking at uh, the unemployment rate, especially amongst the youth. Why do you think um, this reshuffle is, is important? And perhaps what will it signify, depending on the candidates, um, when it comes to perceptions that South Africans have of, of government? Well, as you mentioned, the country is going through a lot of uh, stuff. We, we have energy crisis, there's low trust of, 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 of government. So the president has an opportunity to ensure that he appoints ministers and deputy ministers who will take, out of, uh, who will take, out, uh, who will take us out of this mess that we find ourselves in. But he has an opportunity to, to, to appoint a minister and deputy ministers who will inspire trust, confidence uh, to the public of South Africa. What challenges do you believe he, he is facing um, when it comes to this announcement, especially looking at, uh, you know, we first heard really that this will happen in December. I mean, we're in March already. Looking at the, the, the months that uh, have led to this day being announced, what do you think the president has had to consider? And perhaps, you know, almost like a game of chess, really trying to get a sense of who he will announce. I think, I think maybe the, the challenge that he had faced was to balance between his political uh, ties with, with some of the ministers and deputy ministers and also having to implement what the state capture report has, 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 has recommended. I think he, 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 he maybe had the problem because everyone is looking as to whether will he be able to uh, implement the recommendations of the state capture report. And if he has to do that, it means that he has to ensure those that are close to him, people like Makweja, Mantashi, whom we know that they are in his camp. So he, I think he had a problem with, with, with balancing the two to, so, to say that will he be able to implement the state capture report while also having to deal with having to fire those who are close to him. So what would happen in the instance that uh, the names that you mentioned are still within the new reconfigured uh, cabinet? What message do you think it will send to South Africans? Well, it will tell us that he is a man of, 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 of not his way because he told us that he will implement the state capture recommendation. So if he does not uh, uh, fire Minister Mantashi, Deputy Minister Makweta, and Deputy Minister Koto, then it means that he has failed to, to, to respect what uh, uh, Deputy, uh, uh, Judge Zondo has, has done with his team insofar as revealing the roles that Mantashi and Makweta and, and Kotoa were involved in the, in, the, in, the state, in, the, in the state capture report. Yeah, very well. Thank you so much. Thanks for weighing in. Ezekiel Gekana, a researcher at the Helen Sussman Foundation, saying there's no place for state capture beneficiaries as the cabinet reshuffle is set to be announced. Come